Hi everyone and thank you for joining us at the Microsoft Power BI UK user group. I'm your host Leon Gordon and as always we're back with another fantastic opportunity to come together as a community and learn more about Power BI. Um, Pragati, we're back slightly earlier today with a 12 o'clock start um, as opposed to 6 o'clock. How's your day going so far? Yes, yeah, so far going good. Just again in some Power BI issues but yeah, I'm sure I'll be able to figure them out by the end of the day. Hopefully it's going great for you. Yes, excellent so far. Uh, I'm actually off today. Um, I say I say off. Um, spending a bit of time for vac vacation and having a couple of meetings. So, um, yeah. but really, really, really excited for today's session. Um, we're going to be taking a look at Daneb for aesthetics with fellow MVP Kerry Colosco. Um, for a lot of people that are into visualization within Power BI, I'm sure you're going to be both. Um, awed and amazed uh, at what's possible using Dayneb and I'm really excited for today for today's session for Getty. Uh, I myself I mean um, honestly I haven't tried Dayneb before but I've seen Kerry's posts so far and, and they look pretty good so today I'm really you know excited to see what she's going to show us in Dayneb because I may just try out things now after this session today so yeah I, I very much looking for very much looking forward to it. Excellent. Well, what I'll do, I'll give a brief introduction to Kerry based on her biography, and then we shall get Kerry online to join us. Okay. So Kerry Colosco is a data visualization consultant hailing from Adelaide, South Australia. She has several years experience in reporting and business analyst roles across a wide range of industries. An educational background in business and psychology has aided in the refining art of data storytelling. As we mentioned before, Kerry is also a Microsoft MVP, and she shares her data visualization designs and design tips at kerrycolosco.com. Kerry, it's an absolute pleasure to have you with us today. Thank Hello, you. how are you? Good. Fantastic, thank you. How are you? Yeah, pretty good. Um, excited. Thanks and for uh, joining us at this late hour in your time zone, basically. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's uh, 9.30 at night. It's not too bad. Oh, excellent. Well, no, like Thank I say, so I know that we've wanted to to have this session for a while now. So really appreciate you joining us. Um, if, if everybody listening in could tell us where they're joining us from in the world as well, that would be fantastic. And um, Kerry, we'll hand over to you for your session. No worries. Cool. So today I'm going to be talking about Zenib for Power BI. And what I'll be doing is I'll be giving an introduction to the tool and I'll be talking through grammar of graphics, what I mean by aesthetics, and then I'll be creating a den of custom visual and demonstrating the more basic and simple types of aesthetic tweaking we can do with our visuals um, that we can't currently do with our core visuals. This won't be an advanced session. It's very much a beginner to intermediate session. And um, what you can see on this front page as well is um, the, in the picture frame, I've got some vector art, which I've created in the Den of Custom Visual. And um, I have similar things posted on some of my Instagram. So I've already been introduced, so I'm not going to dwell too much on this. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm a data visualization consultant from sunny South Australia, and I blog about my learnings in data storytelling. I uh, focused on Power BI as a tool set. Um, and I'm also a challenger for Workout Wednesdays, um, which if you haven't heard of before, it's a community where we set weekly challenges for people to try their hands at various data visualization techniques in Power BI. And we have challenges for all levels from beginner to advanced. And we also include a few denim challenges in there as well. So if you want to try your hand at denim and you haven't started um, doing that before, um, I encourage you to enjoy. Um, follow along. There's instructions and solutions as well for each of the challenges and I um, encourage you to join and share your work. That would be fantastic. Um, so like I said before, presenting on Denep, which is an certified app source custom visual for Power BI and it's created by the absolutely marvelous uh, Daniel Marsh Patrick, also a data platform MVP. Um, the visual's been in AppSource for close to a year now, and there's been a fair bit of content and material developing around it within the community. Um, I would like to ask if anybody hasn't used Denna before, or who has or hasn't, but I don't know if we've got um, a chat going. No? Um, so I'll yes, continue we will have on. a chat going on um, both on LinkedIn and YouTube. Okay, I'll just continue on, that's no problem. Um, so, 
Uh, why use Denip and how can Denip help us in business intelligence? So I'm going to be running through a few things. I'm going to run over a few reasons why we might choose to use Denip over um, other custom visuals and core visuals. So there are a number of options for us when we, um, as report developers, when we want to build visuals in Power BI. Um, as designers, we choose between many custom visualization options, and we're always balancing trade-offs among um, things like, you know, expressiveness, can I build it? Efficiency, and you know, how long is it gonna take? Um, accessibility, do I know how to build this? Um, and, you know, other factors such as you know, performance, um, report performance, and, you know, uh, maintenance and upkeep of visuals as well. And the options that we have to us um, range from out of the box, um, click, clicky, draggy, droppy, low complexity to use uh, through to something like Synoptic Panel and PureViz, um, which require no code to use, but they're a little bit more involved uh, whilst also offering more flexibility. And, you know, right through to um, the visual SDK and building, building our full-blown uh, visuals or uh, app source visuals. And so um, this image was kindly provided by Daniel and he created it in Denip himself. So um, whilst it's usually interactive, I've taken a still image. And what Daniel has done is um, on the um, complexity um, range, he's placed Denip somewhere between the, the low code and, and the high code options. Uh, personally, I think it tends to, to lean more towards the low code, but, um, you know, Deneb will be anywhere from, from low to high code, depending on how you utilize it. Um, so depending on how involved you want to get. Um, and it has a lot of advantages over our Python and full uh, bone custom visual development because there's uh, no need to download packages and set up your own environment. Um, R and Python visuals, for example, don't interact with other visuals on the Power BI report page, nor do they publish to web, which Dena being certified does. Um, so really we might choose uh, Dena for our custom visual creation when the core and out of the box visuals don't meet our needs. So myself and the community have done a lot of number of presentations over the past year on Deneb and its usefulness for business intelligence. Uh, in previous presentations, I've given an introduction on Deneb and how it works, which is the ability to build visuals with a JSON specification. And this is preferable for some people over other custom visual builders like Charticulator. Um, for, for various different reasons, sometimes it's just personal preference quite often, but Deneb offers a finer grain control for building and modifying visuals and is uh, has an easy templating feature for reuse. Um, for me, Deneb, Charticulator and Plotly sit around um, the same sort of effort in terms of building custom visuals and they all have their pros and cons in terms of what's easily achievable. So Charticulator, for example, is better for polar and radio plots and Plotly is probably better for statistical and 3D charting. But Deneb's really um, can be used across all of those things. Um, and I, you know, it's probably a better, for me personally, a starting point for building uh, visuals. And I'll be showing later on how to, to use Power BI and their templating features later in the presentation. Um, so other presentations have demonstrated how Deneb can be useful when visualizing KPIs. So um, Deneb can help enhance our KPIs and put them into greater context, better context than we can ordinarily do with our custom visuals. Um, and we can create our own custom KPIs without having to layer core visuals on top of each other, which if done well, can vastly improve our report performance and um, report maintenance. Um, sometimes though, it is simpler to go with the core visuals. And you know, whilst there's a lot more on offer in AppSource now for KPI cards than there was a year ago, Denis still offers a lot more flexibility if it's needed. Sometimes we get given some really particular customers and some really particular use cases and Denis can help us with that. Other presentations as well demonstrated how we can get creative with Denis to build bespoke visualizations um, to engage our users or better communicate our message than we ordinarily could. 
And Zenith is also really good for those really unusual requirements and use cases. And we can create novel and memorable presentation and storytelling um, with Zenit. So here, for example, um, being novel, there's a slope graph that I've created um, and behind it, so it shows, the slope graph shows the change between two points in time. Um, but behind it, I've also layered a graph showing the, um, the movements over all the dates between 1977 and 21, 2021 over time as well. Um, which is an unusual use of a slope graph. And similarly here is just a um, Harry Potter data set, which I've made to look like Harry Potter uh, ones as well, being novel. Um, other presentations as well has been demonstrated how DNM can be used for quick data exploration and statistical analysis using the statistical API. Um, we can use this to perform um, various different types of regression, such as linear regression, least ordinary squares regression, polynomial, um, and we can create various types of scatter plots and heat maps to explore, explore distributions that we can't ordinarily do uh, with standard visuals. And here it's less about aesthetic, more about function. And the statistical exploration is vaguely like strength. Um, it was pretty much what it was envisaged for. Um, and with the statistical APIs, it's very, very useful. We can return things like the correlation coefficients, which I find personally very hard to do in Power BI with DAX. Um, so um, definitely go straight to Deneb to, to do these things. Um, but whilst we um, looked at the function of the uh, quick data exploration, this presentation, I'm going to be focusing on aesthetic. And um, I'll be presenting what the, the art of the possible with the aesthetic, um, not necessarily advocating what is good aesthetic design, but showcasing you know, what's available to us um, with Deneb. So more about what is Deneb. Did anybody want to ask any questions before I started going on? Yeah, I think there's definitely been um, a few good comments um, as well that we can that we can circle back on at the moment, Kira, if you're happy to. So I know that you mentioned um, Deneb users. Um, so we do have some comments coming in. Uh, Jesse, Jacinta, um, they mentioned they've used it. Um, Jewel F um, used Vega Light, but haven't tried Deneb yet. Um, Satwick, Shanoi, uh, not really, but looking forward to it. Um, and then some comments as well coming in uh, from Christian as well. Um, here to find out more and excited to learn more. Um, and then um, Brigatti, I'll hand over to you for the for the first question. Yeah. So so the so the first question that came came from Jacinta is like, Kerry, with which articulator you could erase the scaffolds, like you did for your space mission visual? Is it possible with Deneb? Uh, the custom axes, I don't believe so. Um, it would be a lot of brain power uh, to be able to do that custom uh, axes in Deneb, but you can use polar um, plots. Um, it takes a little bit more effort than it would in Charticulator, but polar plots is certainly possible in Vega Light and Vega. Okay, thank, thank, thanks for that. Fantastic. That's all the questions for now, Kerry. Thank you. No worries. So going on, uh, what is Deneb? Um, so Deneb is built around Vega and Vega Light. Um, it offers an immense amount of creative freedom and expressivity in data visuals, enabling us to create some interesting new designs in Power BI that weren't possible to us previously, um, again, with course visuals. And what we can see here is um, a number of uh, different uh, languages. So here, Vega is a declarative um, visualization grammar built on top of JavaScript using D3 libraries. So D3 uh, being a JavaScript library uh, for manipulating documents or DOM uh, based on data um, using things like HTML, SVG, and CSS. Um, and whilst it's not a charting library per se, it's a popular tool in data visualization circles. Um, it's very involved and very low level. So Vega is much higher level um, specification language on top of D3. 
and it's intended to be a more convenient for a, range, a wide range of common custom visualizations. Um, not as expressive as D3, so D3 will be suited for um, more novel designs. And whilst Vega is known as a visualization grammar, Vega Lite is known as a visual, ah, going back a bit, visual analysis grammar. Don't click. <laughs> um, and uh, so it's, and that's because it provides a concise JSON uh, syntax on top of that. Um, intended again for rapid generation of um, visualizations to support analysis. So that's that statistical um, data exploration. And it's higher level than Vega um, because it um, assumes some useful charting defaults. So Vega Lite will automatically produce appropriate scales and legends rather than you having to specify every component of your vis visualization as you would do um, with Vega and D3. So Vega, you know, maintains an expressivity advantage over Vega Lite, um, as Vega Lite is a subset of Vega. And so Deneb then wraps all that up and encapsulates it and allows us to create Vega and Vega Lite JSON specifications in Power BI. Um, additionally, there's also um, Deneb Extras, um, that Daniel has uh, contributed and popped into the, the custom visual. And um, that's things like pattern fill, um, the ability to use Power BI colors, uh, things like selection, I think it's cross-hiding, highlighting not cross-filtering, and some hidden Easter eggs in there that I'm waiting for people to find um, too. So um, what is declarative visualization grammar? So declarative languages require basically um, a developer to specify what the results of a um, computation should be rather than you know how they should be computed. Uh, visualization grammar is uh, founded upon Leyland Wilkinson's grammar of graphics. And what that means is um, a system of breaking a data visualization into layers and describing those layers um, as opposed to selecting from a menu of predefined chart types. So, you know, like when we're going to Excel, um, we'll go in and select a line chart, a bar chart, a radar chart. Um, with the grammar of graphics, we're drawing those charts up from uh, layers, uh, kind of like so. So um, within Vega Lite, for example, um, this is how they've broken that, uh, that out. Um, so we'll start with a data layer, which describes our layer. We'll have um, a transform step where we then transform our data you know, using joins and um, folding. Um, we might also perform statistical uh, analyses over these so aggregations and density. Um, the next layer will be um, plotting marks. And these are basic shapes in which the properties such as position, size, and color can be used to visually encode our data, uh, whether that data will be constant or variable. Um, and then we'll have our encoding. So these are the encoding channels, as I mentioned before, position, size, and color um, mapped between uh, mapping to the, the marks. Uh, we'll then specify things like the view composition. So whether we want to have small uh, multiples and um, layers and the rows and columns of subplots. Vega Lite is, um, built on top of the grammar of graphics. So what that has is it's an interactive visualization grammar, and they've added um, an interactivity grammar um, with parameters. And here um, we can specify conditions, so pan, zoom, mouse over, and select, which we can then um, encode with data as well. So that can um, change how our marks look based on those, those actions. Um, and then our configuration, which is basically the theme, um, the non-data ink. So things like the axes and the colors and, and uh, stroke widths and things like that, that we're not actually encoding data with um, the aesthetics. And coming very soon, it was recently announced um, animations. So um, very soon we can also expect to see um, animations um, available to us with Vega and Vega Light. And this is a very, very exciting feature as well. Um, so we can 
uh, now build you know, our own animated bar plots and um, you know, other animation, animation features with that as well. Not yet in Denim, by the way, but soon, <laughs> supposedly. Uh, grammar of graphics. So what is that? So um, when we think about uh, visual design, and um, one way to conceptualize data is to think about visuals as comprising data types, visual attributes, and marks. So in this way of thinking, you know, marks are components of shapes, who, um, which you know can again we map to data, and we can use these uh, graphical marks, um, abstracted data models, and visual encoding channels um, to give us a more expressive design space. Um, and so point, line, and area can be considered the component parts of shapes, um, which is what we're graphing in our visualization. So many tools will have basic shapes and things like polygons, arcs, text, and images as the foundational elements that we can have, you know, height, width, and scale modifications to. Um, so within Vega and Vega Lite, building off the grammar of graphics, they offer an array of marks and composite marks for use, making it faster to generate visuals. So composite marks um, being um, multiple mark types. So a box plot, for example, will contain you know, a rectangle mark and line marks. An error band will contain a line mark and area mark. Um, and an image mark will act like a point mark. So we can manipulate the image um, with size and scale like you can at point, but we can't stretch it like we would in an area mark. So we can't plot it from x1 to, to x2 between two points um, to, to change the, the width and height of those images. We can only, only scale. Whereas a, a rectangle will act like an area mark. So we can, we can plot between uh, x and y. And whereas the square would also act as a, as a point mark in, in that respect. So um, thinking in that way will help us build out our visuals, uh, visuals as well. So within Vega Lite, we have, we have those marks, uh, quite a few to choose from. Our encodings, um, so X, Y, X2, Y2, theta, um, our position encodings, uh, radius, and we've got latitude and longitude. Uh, we've got our mark properties, so these are, things such as, I don't think they're limited to these, but color, fill, opacity, shape, size, stroke, angle, and text. Um, and then when we do our encodings, we need to specify um, our data. So whether we're gonna use a field, a value, or a data point, um, and the data types, whether that's nominal, ordinal, quantitative, and temporal. And these are important to know because these are where um, our, um, I'm not trying to say, um, our, our assumed defaults are. So um, if our data type is temporal, um, Vega Lite will assume um, a certain axis layout. Um, and similarly, if it's a quantitative, it will assume a certain scale on the axis. So they're quite important to, to note and things like formatting types as well. Um, we've got various transforms we can do with Vega and Vega Lite. I won't list them all out, but these perform, you know, our lookups and um, calculations and our view compositions. So whether we're going to um, small multiple, whether we're going to lay a multitude of marks on top of each other, such as a combo bar and line chart that will be consistent of layers of bars and lines. And then we have a concatenation option. So we can join two different uh, chart types next to each other as well. So I'm gonna, um, in PowerPoint, I'm gonna go through the process of building out a visual using these. Um, I will demonstrate in Power BI later, building a visual in Denet. Um, so we can start with our data. So um, Vega Lite's data property describes the visualization's data source um, either inline so we can type in our values in a in the JSON. Um, we can use a URL uh, to data. Um, however, this will not work within the certified Deneb visual. Um, it does work in the standalone visual. Um, and that's the uh, trade-off of being certified is not having those external links. Um, 
With Deneb, any data that you add to the um, visuals values is automatically um, assigned to this data set. And that's what we need to refer to if we're using the data set within uh, Power BI. And this automatically updates um, as we add or remove uh, columns or we filter our data. Um, also, Vega Light includes the, upper, um, the ability uh, to create data generators, uh, which can data, uh, generate data sets um, like numerical sequences, like we can do with DAX when we create generate series. We can do this within Vega Light as well. So we can start with a single uh, mark, which is a single point. Um, and that's very simply uh, a simple de uh, declaration of uh, mark and type point. Then we can come along and we can encode by position um, on the X. And we're going to use the field um, date. And we're going to say type is temporal. And because we specify temporal, it's assumed a default axis uh, formatting. And if we wanted to, we can uh, change that formatting type, but we're going to keep with the default. Um, we can then encode by position along the Y axis. So here we can um, done a quantitative unit. And also we can encode by color. So here we've used the field project that's automatically created us a legend. Um, and we've uh, encoded by the color by projects. Am I going for time? Oh, not very, not very good. Um, and so also we can create layers, um, creating two uh, layers on top of each other uh, by simply using our mark point um, and our mark line with the encodings layered together like so. Um, we can also um, facet and small multiple that out. And with the facet operator, we can create a, a view for, like a trellis pot. Um, but when we go to a facet or concatenate our visuals, we must um, specify the height and width, because we um, once we do this, we can no longer auto size our visuals. And then to place the views side by side, we have operators, um, horizontal concatenation or vertical concatenation. Here I've used a horizontal concatenation. Um, and within that, we've got our um, original layer, we've created a um, view for a box plot with its encodings and its color. And we can also do statistical transform. So with the density, um, we've transformed to produce um, density calculation. And with a mark, we're going to plot it with area and we've orientated it horizontal rather than vertical, um, like so. And we can also add interactivity. So uh, tooltips are quite simple um, by specifying the tooltip in the mark. And our um, interactivity with parameters. So here I have named the parameter paintbrush. And what I've uh, specified here is um, on mouse over. We're going to hit the point. Um, and the size is going to change on the condition um, of this parameter. And it will change from the size of 50 to the value of 300. And then our theme. So in our configuration section of Deneb, we can change the theme. And this can be all sorts of different theming options. Um, we can change the padding of the visuals and you know all sorts of um, other grid and axes uh, type things as well. Um, so there's also a lot of community resources available for us as well. Um, we can go onto the Deneb website and there'll be a, a list available to us. Um, and we can see lots of uh, templating and um, documentation that's available to help us build our visuals from other community members. I'm just going to pause there if anybody wanted to have any questions. Don't have a lot of time. <laughs> That's okay. There, don't, there doesn't appear to be any any current questions, Kerry. So we're happy to continue. Excellent. So um, now that we've got the building blocks, um, I guess I wanted to walk on about you know how we go out about building um, 
the uh, visuals and talk about the aesthetics. So um, there's often a question that gets asked a lot um, with uh, report developers, you know, how important are aesthetics in um, data viz and how are they important are they in business intelligence? Um, and, you know, they're reasonably important, but um, the amount of importance you place on it obviously depends on context as well. So aesthetics instill confidence in the product. Um, with good aesthetics, users are more tolerant of usability issues, um, studies showing that users rate visually uh, appealing designs is more usable than they truly are. Um, you know, aesthetically pleasing designs evoke positive attitudes and visceral responses in users. And um, anecdotally, users ask fewer questions about the integrity of the data and the data visualizations when they're presented with polish. And this aesthetic usability effect has been really well studied by a number of U uh, UX designers. And, um, you know, following, if you follow data visualization competitions on LinkedIn and social media, you can start to observe this usability um, effect as well. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to skip through because I'm running through and uh, running out of time. Um, so what makes a design aesthetically pleasing? Um, so in data visualization field, sometimes the term aesthetics is used to describe non-data ink, the non-essential parts of your data visual. In design terms, aesthetics includes factors such as balance, color, movement, pattern, scale, shape, and visual weight. And so an aesthetically pleasing design, you know, uses rules. Um, typically, we see um, in photography and things such as the golden ratio, the rules of thirds, uh, things like the just out principles. Um, and balance amongst visual uh, elements is, and um, having a lot of white space is really quite important. Um, and that's because we have a subconscious assumption um, you know, we were constantly looking for that sense of balance. Um, and we, we we're always seeking that equilibrium in everything that we see. Um, so visual weight is a, a important concept as well in dashboard design. And uh, visual weight refers to how much an element um, draws the uh, viewer's eye in a, in a picture. So anything that's um, got a high or a heavy visual weight uh, will capture a lot of attention um, and detract attention from everything else. And our, yeah, when we, we look at it, we, we're assigning a form of heaviness to different things that we see. And there's a few sort of um, general rules as to, to what uh, makes an element heavier um, on a page. And that usually that's just things like size, uh, the darkness of an image, um, the contrast of an image, complexity and um, things like uh, the object actually being heavy in real life makes it appear more heavy on the page and um, sort of the placement as well. So um, objects are placed uh, you know, in the uh, rule of thirds, like on the thirds is appears a lot heavier um, than if it were placed in the middle or the centre of one of the, um, the thirds as well. And this is an interesting concept that I'll be exploring a little bit. Um, so putting a putting a object on one of these lines creates sort of more tension and uh, energy in the visual. Um, and so here we can sort of see demonstrated um, that that balance that we can have. So we have you know a larger, heavier color um, object, and that's balanced by smaller um, and more complex and dense um, visuals here. And we can see that there's a difference in the visual weight of these two objects. Um, so here's a, a design that I've thought very much about um, balance. And this is how, you know, in one of my previous designs, to try to, to balance the page uh, based on, on things like the, the size and weights of the various visuals. I'm going to pause. Is any questions? There are indeed, Kerry. And just to point out, that was a fantastic um, entry into, if I remember, the Data DNA data set challenge. Uh, Aha! Friends. It was. <laughs> Excellent. Um, okay, so we do have a question coming in from um, Hamad. And uh, they ask, how can viability be balanced for people with visual issues? 
um, the clarity and the color scheme. The viability. Yeah, so I believe this was when you were going through um, the previous slide. Um, I think that what they're asking from that perspective is anything to be aware of from accessibility. Um, so this could be color blindness um, and, and those type of uh, accessibility issues. Uh, not with visual weight and balance, I wouldn't think um, that would play in too much in, in this sense. Obviously, accessibility is very important in data visualization. We do need to be conscious of that. But when it comes to to balance um, and visual weight, I don't, don't believe it plays too much into that. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and then Pragati, just a comment from Taris. Yeah, so I, I think Charis is just mentioning like amazing introduction into Denov and Vegalite, Gary, excellently structured presentation on the topic. So it's like a pure joy seeing you delivering this presentation here, I guess. So yeah. Thank you. All awesome. right. Let's continue. Cool. Awesome. All right. So what I've got here is I have a demo dashboard um, containing dummy data. I have to sort of express that um, it, of my personal website. And it's very simple, um, and it contains only the information I really care about. And for me, that's just total page views um, in a given time period, uh, what pages are being viewed, and you know the number of users and unique um, views is sort of secondary information that I have interest in. Um, so this is a dashboard created using Power BI defaults, and it's not terrible. Um, so I, I don't mind it. It has a lot of white space, and I'm a massive fan of white space and minimal um, colors and boxes and lines and grids on my pages. You know, I really go for simplicity and ease of read. Um, but for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to show, you know, I'm intending to show the art of possible with Denev, um, what we might use it for, and what kind of controls we'll have on visual aesthetics um, with Denev and, and what can be applied. So looking at this dashboard there are a few things that have my attention right so i like the color and i like the way the uh, bars complement the um the area charts what i don't like is that the kpi um cards here are too large they're, they're very they're too large to read my, my eyes are um uh, you know trying to expand trying to fit them in and um, they don't provide good symmetry. So the bars here are too far left and it's quite distracting. Um, and so the, the lines here, the sharp spikes are also quite um, distracting as well. Um, so there's some interesting interpretations of why we might be more calmed by um, sort of uh, wavy lines rather than vertical and zigzag lines. And uh, these interpretations, you know, often sort of hark back to our natural environment. So things like vertical lines signal strength and horizontal lines sort of signal um, stillness and stability. And um, zigzag lines, you know, are a bunch of vertical horizontal diagonal lines, right, that, you know, represent anxiety and excitement or, or sharp, dangerous objects, right? Whereas curved lines sort of represent, you know, comfort and ease and that they're gentle, kinds of like, you know, the fluid movement of water. And they also communicate sometimes quite essential message, sensual uh, messages because they remind us of the curves of the human body as well. Um, so what I'm intending to do is um, it's soften those lines with monotone lines. Um, and whilst not everything on this page needs to be curved because we've got you know, numbers with curves and sliders with curves. Um, you know, this is this is what ends up and what we get as a result, right? So here um, with Deneb, because uh, this can't be done with a um, core visual, I've brought the bar charts in to provide better balance. So I've used that rule of thirds, and this is centered in one of those thirds, and it brings a much better balance in my personal opinion. Um, and uh, these these lines here, you know, are now curved, right? And they're a lot more relaxing as well. So um, this is, a, you know, quite, I feel like quite a nice balance thing. Uh, usually this might normally have quite heavy weight, but that seems to be balanced by um, this title up here as well. Um, and now that these uh, KPI cards aren't quite so, so large and oversized. Um, but, what else I've done is here, I've added a gradient fill 
because I wanted to play around with that visual weight, right? So I don't think it's necessary to, to have the gradient fill on this, um, this uh, design, but it demonstrates that, you know, that you can lighten the, the page up and, um, you know, take some of that visual weight off those area charts. And there might be times where that might be useful to do that, depending on, you know, how, you know, what visuals you have on your page um, to create that kind of balance. Um, and again, in this version, I've added a secondary color into the gradient fill. It looks quite ugly, but, you know, it's just to show you uh, what else can be done. And that adds, a, a, you know, a bit more visual weight again in, into the report. And with the bar chart, these are smaller, but to create consistency across the visuals, you know, I've created um, grid lines um, across these charts here. And I've also created them here because it, can help with the readability when we've got, um, if you looked at the previous one, um, some people might find it hard to follow um, and read across here, um, adding, oops, adding those lines can help with that readability as well. So up for a demo, if anybody has any questions, I'm about to stop sharing for a bit to get my demo ready. No problem at all. Um, we do have a few comments coming through. Um, Madison mentions uh, that monotone inter interpolation always looks pleasing in, in their humble opinion. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I think we have, we have got one question from, sorry, I'm not sure what that name is, but yeah, <laughs> I'll just go on with the question. So apart from the documentation, is there a Vegalite book for when I get stuck? Um, I don't know. I don't know if there's any um, books or other resources other than the uh, website. This sounds okay. like a fantastic opportunity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kerry, I think, yeah. Cool. Leon, would you like to go with another question, I think? Yep, yeah, one more question um, from Mikhail. Um, and they ask, can we get access uh, to the files so that, that's from the files for today's session so they can experiment um, themselves? Yeah, I will be putting that up somewhere afterwards. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Thank you very much. And we'll obviously share it with the audience um, following that. Cool. All right. So let me get my screen. I just I don't want to press the big red leave studio button. I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, share screen. And then um, so this bit's going to be a bit difficult whenever I'm sharing um, online Power BI does get quite slow. So I've done this in the browser because it's got a slight performance improvement and you'll have to forgive me. I live in Australia, I have terrible internet. So this might be quite slow, but let's have a go. No problem at all. Excellent, I'll just add your screen to the stream now. Perfect. All right, so wish me luck. This could go horribly wrong. <laughs> um, so here I got my core visuals. Oh, I'll just hide that. Everything's gone quiet. Yeah, that's okay. We can we can hear and see your screen. Uh, fine. Beautiful. All right, here we go. So um, here we have our Deneb um, custom visual. I've already loaded in. I'll just rename that. And hopefully I've got, oh no, rats, I didn't, let me, bugger. Oh, never mind, I'll keep going. I just realized I haven't uploaded the latest file, but that's fine, I'll keep going. Here we can start by building out a bar chart. And there's a number of uh, options we can have for us when we start building with a bar chart. Um, we can import from templates, um, or we can use one of the existing templates, such as a simple bar chart here. I'm going to start from empty and create a empty specification. I'm going to try and zoom in. There we go. So you can see what I'm creating. 
So this is the size of the visual on the visual canvas. And uh, here we've got our data, as mentioned before, and we started with a layer. So what we need to do is start with our mark. So we're going to start with a mark. And I'm typing this out, so this is going to be a little bit slow. And I'm going to go mark type bar. Oops, I don't want to do that. And I'm going to hit play. And that's probably not going to work. I'm going to have a encoding. Probably missing something here, aren't I? And the field is going to be on the long the x is going to be page views. So I'm going to type in page views. And type. Quantitative. And then I'm going to start with a oops. Not normal. So there's something wrong in my syntax here. Let me find what it is. Um, X, Y, coding. Aha, I need. Working on the fly. There we go. So what we've got here is we've got a bar chart, but because I have a stupid amount of data in here, it's really, really condensed, right? So it's not particularly helpful for us. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in the height and the width. And let me remember if it goes in here, it's going to be horrible if I put it in the wrong spot. Aha, beautiful. So I've made the, um, the width of the visual 275 across. And the step refers to the step of these bar charts. So if I move that step to 15, you'll see that it shrinks. So I'm going to go make it probably about 20 for now. Okay, so what we've got now is that um, we've got our bar chart, but it's sorted um, alphanumerically, right, which is not particularly useful to us. Um, what we want to do is we want to sort by the um, the value here. And we can do that, and I'm going to type this one in, um, by in our y, we're sorting the y. We want to sort by the um, page view values. So in here, I'm going to enter in the sort. Um, and we're sorting by page views, and we're doing that order by descending. So I'm going to hit play, like so. And that's going to work. Yay! <laughs> um, so what we want to do now is that, you know, whilst this is, you know, a nice bar chart, it's not really particularly useful to us because the whole point of creating this bar chart is um, to create something different that's not in our custom visual, but it's also to save space on the canvas. And there's a number of ways we can try and save space on the canvas. And um, one way would be to overlay the labels onto the bars themselves. All right. So um, to do that, we want to go into our Y encoding. And we want to um, perhaps put a, a axis title of null. Um, and then we want to um, specify our um, axes. I'm going to type this in, sorry, I paste this in. So um, let me just change, there we go, so it's a bit more readable. Um, so within our Y encoding, um, I've placed the type, no, a null title, and in the axes of the, the Y, um, taken off the grid and the ticks, 
and I've left aligned the labels and um, put them in you know, a little bit of padding. So if I change that to 15, for example, those labels will come in a little bit more. We, there we go. That was just a bit slow. Um, and what I've also done is that I've brought the um, axes on top of the um, bars as well um, by changing the z-index. If I make that a zero, for example, the uh, axes will be behind the um, the marks as well. So, oh, this is so slow. <laughs> there we go, like that. So we change that back to. sitting on top and I can also change the label colors which I'll do whilst I'm here um, I think everything is camel paper I think that's the correct term um, and I'll probably change the color of the bar as well so because it's constant I'm not um, encoding this with the data I'm actually putting the color up in the mark rather than in the encoding channels because there's no need to have it um, dynamically encoded. And I'll probably just create for now because I can't think of the other color that I was using, just a sky blue. So that's just CSS um, coloring. So you can use the CSS uh, names or hex values or RGB values um, in here. Like that. And so that has us a bar chart that we can scroll. And so um, with that, we know that there's a lot of um, different um, options for us. And whilst that was quite involved to start a basic bar chart, um, you know, if we want to get started with Zenith, we can really cheat um, and just copy other people if you wanted to. So as I mentioned before, there's a lot of community um, resources out there. Um, so we've got um, lots of wonderful community members, which we can see from the dev documentation that's providing us some templates uh, for us. Um, we can go into um, Power BI Tips uh, GitHub repository, and they're starting to collect a lot of um, community templates here. I'm just going to hop on over to my own because I've already got some pre-prepared. Um, coming in here so we can quite easily just copy a template paste it into a notepad the file save as and um, we will name this one demo bars and then we're going to save it as a json Oops, no, I don't want to search everything. There we go. Uh, I was in the browser today, aren't I? There we go. Back into. No, wrong browser. That browser. And we can import from template. And we'll select a JSON template and in oops ah I'm trying to find another one yeah, I'll do something. and that's the template that we had on the site and we can assign a page to our category and page views to our value. And here we have our template. And this one here has uh, rounded bars on the edge here as well. So pausing if anybody had any questions, because I think that's come close to the hour now. Excellent. Thank you very much, Kerry. We do have a question coming in from um, Daryl Lynch. Um, and they ask, is there a form of IntelliSense to help see what options are available um, in the group, e.g. for the Y-axis, for example? Uh, 
well, there's a limited thing. I don't know if I can, there's a limited intelligence at the moment. Okay, um, but it's constantly being improved. Fantastic, thank you very much. Um, and then Brigatti, just a comment from Madison in terms of um, available documentation. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, when, when, I'm not sure who asked, I think it was, um, some, some, yeah, I think someone just asked about the doc documentation on Vega Lightbook, right? So I think Madison just mentioned, Jeff here has a great list of notebooks on observable. So yeah, if, if that can be helpful. Fantastic. And that's all the comments from our perspective um, so far, Kerry. Uh, would you like us to give pass back to you? Uh, yeah, I'll just do a quick um, demo of uh, some of the other sort of set of tweaking, but I'll, I'll end it sh uh, short because we've run out of time. Um, Fantastic. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. So um, coming back on to, uh, you know, what's possible with Deneb in terms of aesthetics. So, you know, you might think about we've got, um, if you want to change our visual weight, for example, on a page, we can do things like create dumbbell um, bars. So these are layering a line mark and a um, circle mark on top of each other. Um, we can also, Once we have before the labels on top of the bars, we can actually offset those labels too to make something look a little bit uh, neater and um, go through and create all sorts of variations on the same visuals um, with the formatting options that are available to us. Um, I'll just flick through one more. Oops, as well. And then I'll just end it. I'll end it there. Um, as well. Uh, so before, um, you know, we can even sort of change our bar styling to look a little bit more like the you know the other visuals on the page to help create that that um, same sense of theme and style, consistent look and feel as well. Um, yeah, so that's it. Kerry, thank you. Absolutely amazing session. Um, yeah. I think Brigatti will probably echo my sentiments in the fact that we Definitely. knew it was going to be exhilarating. Um, yeah. The choices it brings in from a visualization perspective in Power BI is, is just immense. And I think especially the customization option, Kerry, that, that you were just giving different label colors, you were playing around with colors, access formatting options i mean they were pretty good to see i mean honestly i haven't tried this before Gary, as i said before but but i think it just seeing you doing this thing i, I was like okay i i think i should really need to try then because it feels like it has got so much flexibility around that one can add to visualization within power bi itself so yeah thanks thanks this was an amazing session I guess. and yeah we have got a few good comments coming in actually yeah, I totally agree. There's um, a couple of questions. So one coming in from um, Hamad, uh, and he um, asks if there's any, any additional resources other than those that you've covered that you would suggest. Um, there's also observable. Um, so Vega and Vega Lights also used um, in uh, Altair, which is the sort of almost like equivalent of Dana uh, for Python. And um, so there's a lot of other resources out there that you can can use and utilize. Um, so check out the yeah, Vega and Vega Lite specific tutorials on YouTube as well. Um, and they'll be quite handy. And that's just about as much as I can know in terms of resources. Fantastic. I've got a question for you, Carrie, if you don't mind. Um, no. So I like Python. Um, it's no secret. Um, and it's also no secret that Python is not very well supported um, in Power BI in terms of um, deploying um, and obviously refreshing within within the service. Do you see um, Deneb as being the ideal replacement? Or maybe replacement's not the right word. Um, but do you see that Deneb really can serve um, that gap as such um, that we're currently seeing, especially from a Python perspective in visualization? Um, I'm not hugely familiar uh, with Python, but I do believe that it can cover a lot of those gaps. 
Um, so particularly, you know, if you're using Python, you're doing it for some of the statistical stuff. Um, but there's only a limited amount of statistical um, application that you can do with the Vega and Vega Lite compared to, to Python and R, I believe. Um, so yes, it will, because it offers um, better interactivity with core visuals. Um, it's definitely a lot more flexible. It's definitely a good intermediary. Fantastic. Thank you. And then we just have some comments coming in. Um, Pragati, I'll hand over to you just to go through some of the comments. Yeah, so. yeah I think I think this this was definitely an amazing session, Kerry. So yeah, like uh, Bright, Bright is mentioning, thank you very much. I've learned something new today. Oh, good. Then, then yeah, Mikhail is, the smoothness of the line chart is so epic. I think the moment when you were changing the formatting stuff, then Christian says, thank you, great session. Joel is saying, thank you, love the session. Uh, I think I think Hamid is asking if if we can get the slides uh, yes. that you shared for the session. Cool. Okay. Okay. And I think yeah, so many comments there, <laughs> Kerry. I mean, thanks. I'm definitely going to re read of the aesthetic usability effect coming from Fabi at Park. Cool. Okay. And yeah, there, there's so much there. Always gets great, awesome stuff from your content. And yeah, very interesting session. So yeah, people. Everyone, I think, has this, just loved this session. <laughs> oh, fabulous! That's great to hear. <laughs> I, I think I, I think I just I think I just need to ask one question from Kerry. Is that if that's fine? Because I know you have got pretty good experience with Denim within Power BI, and I know this is a custom visual. And I I rarely use any custom visual, Kerry, because I have experienced a pretty bad performance issues, especially in mm. the side. So, would you like to comment something on that? Like, how has your experience been using Denim within Power BI? Um, so performance is always improving. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it's going to continue to improve, um, but it really depends. So there are some cases when you would use Deneb and your report um, does improve on performance mm. because mm -hmm. you've reduced several visuals on a page into one. Um, but there are times where you know you you might not have. For me personally, I'm not the best with with DAX and all that kind of thing. So sometimes you know I would overload the visual and uh, make it a little bit slower than. Say a, say a core visual, for example. And there's always a cost with custom visuals anyway over core visuals. Core visuals always run faster than custom visuals, so there, there will be a lag. But if you're, you're smart and you know what you're doing and you can you know um, make sure you tune and optimise, it's, it's pretty decent um, as well. So, um, yeah, it's, it's about, you know, that finding that balance. Yeah. Okay. Sounds, sounds good. Fantastic. And we do ask everybody um, every session, there is a link in the chat. So please do take the 10 seconds out of your day to leave us feedback on what you would like to see in the future from the Microsoft Power BI UK user group, any topics, and obviously how we can continue to improve um, the webinars that we bring to you. Um, Kerry, we do have more comments coming in. Um, the, the, one of these that we'll just mention before we do, um, do, do finish is that from Satwick, and they mentioned that they think they're going to learn this the reverse engineering way, and they would love to enhance the already available templates to suit their needs uh, instead of starting from scratch. Um, would you recommend that as, as, a, as a suitable yeah. way forward? Yeah, that's how I do it. So go ahead, um, copy, paste, and then learn to tweak the things as you need them. So start with an existing template, know what you want to change. I want to change that that color or that axis or that label. Go to the documentation, work how to, how, how to do that. And the more you do that, the more you remember what's in the documentation, the more you remember what features are available. And then it just becomes second nature. Definitely, definitely go that way. Fantastic. Thank you, Kerry. This has been an amazing session and we really appreciate you taking your time to share the knowledge with us today. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Kerry. That was amazing. Excellent. And um, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, you've been here with us at the Microsoft Power BI UK user group, uh, brought to you in association with Pomerol Partners. Um, and Pragati, thank you very much for co-hosting alongside me today as well. My pleasure, Leon, as always. Excellent. Thank you everybody. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you've been here with us at the Microsoft Power BI UK user group. Now take care. Bye everyone.